Welcome to Empower Humans. Welcome again to the Empower Humans podcast. This is episode 97, day 29 of our continuing coronavirus series here. And I hope you're doing well. I hope we're keeping our heads up high. I hope we're staying positive together. I think there's something, uh, I don't want to say magical, but something powerful in doing that. And collectively as humanity, I might add. I want to, of course, remind you, as always, you know the drill, but it's not just a mindless drill. It's a fact every day. I think we need to remind ourselves for various reasons. You're absolutely priceless. You're never alone. None of that can change. And remember that no matter what you're going through. I know different people are going through job situations or just loneliness situations and all that. Keep in mind the you're never alone aspect of that uh, on multiple levels. We're not alone in what we're all going through right now with this coronavirus thing uh, because we're all affected by it in some form or another and some in various things uh, collectively together as well. But uh, you're priceless. You're never alone. Reach out if you need any help with any of that. Info at EmpowerHumans.com is the email at Empower101 on Instagram and Twitter. Contact us. And uh, also go to hope.empowerhumans.com for some more information and links and some some memes for some comic relief. You can download those and share those throughout uh, social media or whatever you want to do or just enjoy them for yourself or within folks in your home. Uh, so do all those things. And also, let's get into these numbers. The situation continues to evolve with the numbers. Uh, and actually, I'm hearing from certain sources that the peak that we thought was happening is taking a little bit longer than experts predicted. Again, the so-called experts, whether it's the weatherman or the uh, CDC or <laughs> whatever, they aren't, oh, we're all human, which means we might make mistakes sometimes or miscalculate something or whatever the case might be. But as of right now, globally, 2,214,522 confirmed cases, 148,000 983 deaths, almost 149,000, 560,000 plus have recovered. So again, that's almost a fourth of those numbers, uh, which is a positive thing. In the United States, we're at 680,541 confirmed cases, 34,723, almost 35,000 deaths in the United States. These numbers continue to rise at a pretty dramatic rate, which is why we're hoping we hit a peak pretty quickly here so that... Uh, the numbers start to go down, and it all kind of lends itself towards life returning to normal, more or less, uh, in some way. And speaking of life returning to normal, I was listening to some stuff and uh, reading about the Las Vegas casinos. Um, some of these uh, big corporations, Caesars and others, have gotten together and talked about measures to take with all this, that they're anticipating having these casinos and hotels reopened uh, possibly by the month of May, I don't know if that's early May or late May or whatever. Memorial Day is in May as well, so who knows. But uh, talking about employees carrying gloves, wearing gloves, I should say, um, spacing people apart, at least, I don't know, one to two chairs apart between the tables and the slot machines, uh, checking temperatures of employees, uh, maybe even having testing stations of all things. Uh, so it's a really interesting time. Uh, you know, again, we go back to the holiday season. If anyone had been told, yeah, this is what's going to be happening in 2020. Ha ha ha. That's what we would have said. Ha ha ha. <laughs> but here we are. And this is reality. But we as humans are adapting. That's what we do. And uh, I don't, you know, I don't know that casinos is the big indicator, but it's one indicator in our humanity of what's going on. And, and, and as we deal with this, too, some people say one day kind of bleeds into another and people are losing track of time. My son yesterday said, uh, is it Saturday? And as you may know, it was Thursday. In case you don't know, today's Friday. So we're getting everyone back on check with the calendar. Uh, <laughs> today is actually uh, April 17th. Um, also, happy belated tax day, which again was postponed for the first time ever, I believe. Uh, so that happened this week as well. But that's, I think, pushed back as of now to July. But uh, I set my son straight as far as the schedule and what's going on. Uh, no, it was actually Thursday and tomorrow will be Saturday. Uh, also heard sad news uh, outside of the coronavirus. Brian Dennehy, the actor, uh, passed away. He was the dad and Tommy boy. He's been in all kinds of stuff. He was 81 years old. And it's kind of odd, in the last month or two, I was I was thinking to myself, and I think Tommy Boy came out 25 years ago, uh, this month or, or so. And, uh, you know, David Spade posted something about it on Instagram. And in the last couple months, I was hey, what happened to the dad? Because in the movie, spoiler alert, but it's 25 years, spoiler alert, he died in the movie, uh, the dad. And I was like, is he still around? And sure enough, he was. I was like, oh, wow, he's over 80 years old. He's still around. Great. 
And, uh, you know, lo and behold, he passed away and it didn't have anything to do with the coronavirus, just like Kenny Rogers and others who've recently passed. But uh, condolences to those affected and uh, may the memory live on through great, uh, you know, presentations of movies and TV that he put out, especially Tommy Boy, which is one of my favorites. Uh, George Stephanopoulos and uh, his wife have the coronavirus. This isn't, you know, brand new news, but uh, Chris Cuomo of uh, CNN uh, was, of course, diagnosed. Many of you already know that. Now his wife is uh, confirmed positive with coronavirus. They have some kids. And Chris Cuomo is the brother of Andrew Cuomo, governor of New York. Uh, so we hope for the best for them. Um, it's interesting to watch news people do this because sometimes they want to uh, get out in the open and kind of share what's going on and what they're experiencing because they, the, Chris in particular, has the virus. Um, I don't know. He's, I think, recovered to a large extent as well. But he talked about a lot of things he experienced with that. But again, our best wishes to them and all affected, not just those in the spotlight. Uh, we hope that uh, everybody recovers. Um, I, I know that won't exactly be the case, but uh, we're hoping for the absolute best on all levels here. I did see today stocks surged um, after reports said that there's a drug that showed some effectiveness in treating the coronavirus. Um, so this might be the second straight week of stocks surging. Um, one thing, I was going to read a couple things here. Uh through Thursday's close, the S&P 500 has risen 0.35%, while the NASDAQ climbed 4.65%, lifted by double-digit gains in Amazon and Netflix. Doesn't that make sense? Amazon and Netflix have had major gains through all this because people are home ordering things and or watching Netflix and probably some, probably a lot of new subscriptions to Netflix by folks who were previously a lot more busy out in the uh, the workforce that now are stuck at home. So uh, that's interesting <laughs> to see these numbers and driven largely by Amazon and Netflix. Uh, as it concerns the grocery stores, there was this headline, food makers get shot of reality now that panic buying has waned. And one uh, part of that article said every 10% decline in out-of-home food spending, which is restaurants, uh, translates into a gain of just 3% in the retail channel, which is your local grocery store, Smith's, Albertsons, whatever they, that might be. So what that means is people were spending a lot more money in restaurants and now aren't as much uh, because of obvious reasons. And a lot of restaurants across the country are closed and or just taking takeout orders. And so I think a lot of people are cooking at home. Uh, they might just be, you know, yeah, frozen pizza, uh, but they might be cooking actual, uh, you know, gourmet meals too, but they spend less money doing that. And I was at the grocery store the other day and this woman in front of me in line was asking the checkout person about toilet paper saying, oh, there's no toilet paper again. And, and he said that it comes early in the morning and it's usually gone within two hours, which is a pretty long amount of time, but you have to come at just the right time to get the toilet paper. I told you recently I was at Costco walking out and a lady stopped me from her vehicle and said, hey, was there any toilet paper? And I said, no, I didn't see any toilet paper. And she was uh, sad. <laughs> so hopefully the toilet paper thing comes back around. I feel bad for all the trees because that's what, as you may know, paper comes from. Um, this is uh, what's going on right now. And I, I feel like in my heart of hearts, we're coming out of this thing sooner rather than later. This is what I've been saying. Who am I to predict such things? But you're listening to me, and this is what I want to share with you. I feel like we're going to come out of this thing uh, in a positive direction. There will be changes. It'll be a new normal. But I, I just know the resiliency of humanity. I know that things are going to come together uh, to return to jobs and get things back on track. I don't know exactly the time frame. But I think we're closer than some of us might think. The president's putting out guidelines for reopening states. He's loosened up some of his kind of dictatorship kind of comments he made last week about absolute authority and stuff. So he's he's deferring to a lot of the governors. And these are issues that are different state by state. But uh, I, I believe wholeheartedly that things will more or less get back to normal soon. States like New York might take a little longer. Uh, California as well. These are highly populated states uh, with a little bit more diverse and different situation going on there. And of course, a lot more cases, especially in New York, New Jersey, and so on. But uh, keep your heads up high, stay strong, uh, support and uplift others. Like we say, empower the world around you in our podcast. Uh, continue to do that. And of course, our challenges, this is what's going to help keep us sane, growing, learning, doing what humans are supposed to do. And uh, like Tony Robbins always says, if you're not growing, you're dying. Uh, that's something to, to keep in mind. It's kind of this old law that we're never stagnant in one place. We're always moving one direction or another. Either we're growing, either we're progressing, or we're 
uh, regressing, going the opposite direction. We're never just sitting in one place. So as you study, keep that in mind. Learn some things of value. Stimulate your mind. Let's not be too hard on ourselves and hold ourselves to crazy standards at this time. If you got kids at home, you know, do our best with that. Some of us are still working from home, and so we have to kind of juggle a little bit to make sure the kids are doing at least some schoolwork, reading, doing various things to stimulate their minds. But let's continue to progress on all those levels and encourage our kids. Have them listen to this podcast. You know, we'll try to speak more to kids maybe. (laughs) Aside from studying, make great moments. That's something that uh, involves very simple things a lot of times in life. You know, they say the best things in life are free, uh, thanks to old sayings and even the Beatles with their song, Can't Buy Me Love. The best things in life uh, actually truly are free if you think about it, and we could list all those things. But time with loved ones, these are the things as a lot of people have lost their lives and Various ways, and including with this coronavirus, this is these are the kinds of things people realize as they come to the end. Spending time with loved ones and making that time count matters exponentially more than uh, growing some career or some financial thing. And there's something to be said for that too. It has its value, but in the in the lasting scheme of things, make great moments, uh, support and love each other, surprise each other, make things count. And of course, our last challenge is let's keep doing this podcast together. I love you and appreciate you. I know we're going to get through this. And again, reach out if you need to, info at empowerhumans.com at empower101 on Instagram and Twitter, hope.empowerhumans.com. Share the podcast with friends, family, loved ones. You've got Facebook. You've got uh, Instagram and Twitter. And go back to your old MySpace page and share it there too. (laughs) And until next time, my friends, love you. Flattered you spend time with me. And uh, go back and listen, by the way, to episode 96. We put that out a little bit later in the day yesterday as well. So if you missed that, episode 96 is out as well. And we're almost to 100. we got Elena Cardone coming out uh, probably Sunday night. We'll be putting that episode out. We interviewed her yesterday. So until next time, empower yourself, empower the world around you. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening to Empower Humans. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review this podcast. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit EmpowerHumans.com. We'll catch you next time.